Hello, happy Sunday. Thanks for tuning in to this weekend's virtual experience here at Rise Church. My name is Pastor Aaron Higgs, Pastor A. Listen, I'm super excited that you are here, okay? We are going to go further into the conclusion of our God at Home series. So this week, we're going to talk about what it means to have godly conversations at home. Now, it's not just enough just to put on the image of godliness. We actually have to live it out. We have to do that, uh, and one of the ways that we display the character of God or the nature of God, even at home, is seen in the way that we have conversations. So listen, before we get into the, our series conclusion, there's a couple things I want to draw our attention to. And the first thing is, listen, I told you guys that I was going to have a final update on the matching grant. And listen, we've raised just under uh, $7,530 $6, for our matching grant. So we exceeded our target. And I want to let you know I'm excited and thankful to God because we exceeded it by over $1,500. So again, I know I talked about it this past week. I know you've probably seen it on social media. But again, I just want to say thank you so much for your contributions. Thank you so much for all your likes, your shares, your posts, inviting family and friends to join us for this fundraiser. Now, it's all going toward the Finish Line fundraiser. And you all know we have a goal of about $100,000 that we need to raise. Right now, we're just under $85,000 away from being able to make every single thing that we have happen. But let me tell you something. With that being said, I want you to know, we're not going to wait for us to get all the money to continue for us to move in faith and move forward. Now, you may have noticed that um, one of those things that as a church, we're still being able to complete phases forward toward our completion, right? And, and you might be saying, Pastor Ray, I thought we needed all this money. How are things at the building still getting done? Well, they're getting done because some of this uh, for our fundraiser is what we need as a whole, but not necessarily what we need in part. So some of the things can continue to happen and continue to get done while we're still believing God and trusting God for the remaining funds to come in, okay? But I'm going to take it one step further this Sunday. As we are waiting on God to bring in the remainder of the funds, I want you to know where my thought process is. Here's my mentality, okay? We are going to have to have some uh, the funds to pay for the material anyway, right? Whether or not the contractors come later or sooner uh, with some of the remaining finishes. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves and see how we can work to put these things, these final touches together as well, okay? So more information is gonna be coming. I want you to pay attention to our social media pages, but uh, we are also gonna have some interior beautification days. So what that means is we're gonna have some interior paint days, and it might even be calling on some of you to come together and help make it happen. We also might be uh, seeing us lay down or glue down some carpet squares things of that nature. We're going to operate and do and step in what God has for us. And so I'm not going to sit back and say, oh God, if you would just bless us with more money, if you would just do this, when God has already enabled us to have bodies, hands, feet, to be able to bend down and put in some work. Can you say amen? So you might be hearing some more about those things. So please, please, please pay attention to group me, pay attention to our social media pages. We might even push, do some push notifications to uh, your phones through text messages. So pay attention to anything that we push out for rise announcements because we're going to move forward. And like I said before, uh, hey, I've built stages before and I have zero problem building another one now. I've laid down carpet before. I have zero problems putting down carpet now. Can you say amen? Now listen, I want to say thank you to everybody who came out yesterday for our church beautification day. So yesterday was more about the beautification of our building on the outside, more so about like cleaning some things up and getting some things to look more beautiful on the property, on our church building. So I want to say thank you. And thank you to John Mayfield for help leading that activity to beautify our facility, our new church home. So thank you all. Thank you for jumping in so much. I truly, truly appreciate all of you. 
but let's it's like what i said let's continue to keep that mindset of being able to jump in uh, roll up our sleeves and work okay we're going to be able to do some things in the meantime but let me tell you the drywall is like 99 percent done now okay so last thing we really got to take care of after we take care of the final payments to the contractors is our electrical they're doing some sanding and mudding, but then and, uh, they're gonna lay out a portion of the drop ceiling that's gonna go down past our cafe and our offices. Uh, but so after the electrician and after that portion is complete, some of these areas are areas that we can technically go ahead and bring to a close, okay? So we're gonna trust God to bless us financially. So as we continue to move in the project forward, but we're just not gonna wait for everything to be perfect for us to roll up our sleeves and put in some work. We're only a couple weeks away from being able to honestly gather. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our best, do our parts, and trust that as God distributes these funds, and uh, trust me, we still know that there are some things to get paid, but look, we are going to trust God that as he distributes things, we're gonna have able bodies, and we're gonna put up our sleeves, and we're gonna trust God through that process. But more than that, we're gonna show God that he can trust us as good stewards. All right, so listen, if you've already been helping with the beautification days or rolling up your sleeves and helping, thank you in advance, because I know that you're already gonna jump in ahead with us on these interior beautification days, and that might be some of our Sunday cadences for a little bit, right? But um, if you're one of the ones that's been saying, I'm waiting to walk into the building. Once it's done, I can't wait to jump in. Don't be that person. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl that, that says, hey, listen, you know what? I can't wait for all this to be done. And then I'm going to go in uh, the vineyard, right? And I'm going to go reap the harvest. No, no, no. We got to go in the vineyard and work. That's what we got to do. The harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. But listen, be a person that's going to say, you know what, Pastor A, you can count on me. I'm going to be a laborer. I'm willing to go out and work. We're going to get some things done and we're going to make this thing happen. So I'm excited. All right. So listen, let me tell you that for the last couple of weeks, you've been hearing me say that we're really close to being able to announce a date for us being able to gather together. We're so close. OK, uh, I anticipate over the maybe the next week two or even three weeks we'll have this thing solidified okay but this is how close we are okay after the drywall is done drop ceiling is going to go in over our bathrooms hallways and offices and then that's the other side that's going to be, be taking place okay that's approximately only a couple day project the remaining electrical and light fixtures all of that that's left remaining is approximately a three to four day project so with that in mind, some of our two biggest needs at the moment right now are can all be completed within one work week's time. Or it could become accomplished over five days now. So if God blesses us in that way, which we believe he will, send somebody, send the funds, or what our remaining needs are, you know what? We are literally about five working days away from a contractor perspective. And then after that point, all we gotta do is take care of some tile work take care of some carpet and build that stage. We're really, really close. And yes, we still have to order some doors, things like that. But some of these things are not, we're not that far off. Sometimes you might be wondering, what's going on with the building? We're honestly about five. We'll just give a little bit of grace to the contractors. We'll just call it 10 days away from being able to step in and gather. That's how close we are. That's the, the remaining work that's left in the building. So it's really not that much. Okay, so with that being said, please pray, continue to pray because that's how close we are for having these things completed, right? And so I wanted us to have that context today because uh, it's one thing to see pictures on how the building is progressing, but it's another thing to know actually how close we are to being completed. So this project, we're really focused on bringing this project to a close, okay? So think about it, two business weeks. That's how close we are to being able to walk in, gather, and do some things, okay? So once we start getting final dates from some of the remaining work with the contractors, we'll be able to say, hey y'all, on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., meet me out there at 35445 Van Born Row. I've been Van Born again, right? <laughs> okay, all right, that, that humor. Okay, we gotta, all right. I know I'm a little corny, but I've been Van Born again, all right? So, so look, 
we are so close. We're only a few, three to four Sundays away for, to being able to say, meet us on Bamboo and Road, okay? So listen, I'm excited for us to start gathering, start worshiping, start coming together. And so uh, when these things pass, that means um, the remaining things after which are like things like sound equipment. But that, I'll tell you one thing. Do we need sound equipment at the moment? No, we can still gather. We can still trust God. And we'll start seeing things come together. And I'm super, super excited for where God is taking us. I truly believe God is taking us in uncharted territory to make this thing good. All right? So when you pray, please pray a couple things. God will open up a door for us to be able to pay the remainder of our contractors. And that need is about $30,000. Okay? So that's one. And then that God will open up a door not only to pay the remainder of contractors, but um, also that God would send us the laborers, roll up our sleeves, and put in a little bit of sweat equity on these things, okay? So overall, where we're at, yes, you've heard me say the finish line fundraiser, 85000 That's it to get everything completed, finished, nice, great finishes, all these things, furnished, right? Some chairs in our youth wing, cafe, things of that nature. But it, it, we still can do some things, right, in the interim, okay? So like you've heard me say last week when we talked about faith and shared that clip, you can't have faith and be lazy. So we're going to roll up our sleeves a little bit. We're going to work a little bit. And we're going to trust God. He's given us all of these things. But more than that, we're going to show him that we can be trusted to get out there, operate in what he wants us to do, and we can be trusted. So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to pray that God would do a supernatural work exceedingly abundantly. Ephesians 3.20, all we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And I truly believe we're in a season of an overflow and acceleration. So this is how we got to move. It's exactly how we're going to move going forward. Again, pay attention to the social media. I look forward to connecting on these things very soon. All right? Well, listen, today we're going to conclude our series called God at Home. And we're going to talk about what it means to have godly conversations, right? We're going to put everything together in this finale. And what does it mean to have and reflect godly character through what we say? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to getting into this. But before we get into the message, go ahead. You already know the drill. Go ahead, grab a pen, grab some a uh, phone to take some notes because we're getting ready to go further in the word of God. Are you ready? Let's rise. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. And today, we're going to read from the New International Version. This is what it says. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a place or a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, 
that they might have something to share with those in need. Y'all paying attention to this? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen. That's good. So today, we're going to talk about what it means to have godly conversations. Somebody throw that in the live chat, godly conversations, or what it means to speak with godly words. In our series, God at Home, our whole objective of our time together throughout these weeks have been, how do you take the Sunday experience and live that out every day? Because being a disciple or what we would call a Christian or Christ follower is much more than a Sunday experience. It requires us to live in and adopt practices every day so that these things can be lived out Monday through Saturday in addition to Sunday. Godly conversations is a big emphasis because your speech at home often dictates the behaviors found. In your life, but not only just your life, but also in your household as well. You know, I was watching this video on Facebook. I think at least it was Facebook, it might be Instagram. But it was basically when a dad was giving an interview and he was trying to prank his daughter by saying a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't true. And he asked her to sit on the couch with him so he can talk about all the things he does at home, okay? And this dad was talking about all these things that he does all the time, but he was straight lying, right, the entire time. He was talking about how he wakes up at five o'clock in the morning, how he goes for a jog, how he goes running because exercise and fitness was big for him, and how he always eats healthy food, he never eats junk food, and he does all the chores around the house, And as he's saying these things, you can see how the daughter reacted, knowing that he was lying. And after about 30 seconds, she turns to him and was like, Dad, I can't stay here because you're lying, right? Dad, everything you're saying is not true. So he calms her down, agrees for her to sit down. And he says more things and he starts lying again about how he does the dishes and all things like that. Just stuff that the daughter knows is an absolute lie. And this is what happens at the end. The daughter ends up walking away from the interview and said, I can't do this because you're lying. I'm done. You say one thing on camera, but in reality, I know that it's different than what I experience every day. So you're saying one thing and you're putting this thing on, but how you're living is not true. And our God at Home series is very much tailored to not only the presentation, but that the lifestyle matches what you say to people on a Sunday morning. Just like that daughter who in this video uh, at the very end decided to walk away, walk out of this interview, this quote unquote video interview. That's how our household views you and the church if they hear you say one thing on Sunday, but live out something completely different every other day. Now, today our topic on godly conversations is also one of the biggest factors where people can experience a life change on the outside based off of the practices and habits that you're creating for your spirit man on the inside. Y'all hear what I'm saying? One of the great ways that is a great indicator uh, to guide our relationship from home and let that resonate through everything we do for the rest of our life in our interactions, in our communities, in our jobs, is through godly conversations. Somebody throw that in the live chat, godly conversations. Well, in our reading today, in the book of Ephesians, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. And the first thing as he begins these conversations uh, uh, and these little talking points are this point. In his letter, first thing he tells us to do is have the truth present in our conversations. 
Paul says to speak truthfully with our neighbors. And for a long time, it seemed like society had a good grasp on what the truth is. But it feels like now in the past, I don't know, decade or so, I've heard things come through and, and spewed and spoken things. Things like alternative facts and your truth and all these other phrases to kind of side skirt the reality of what truth really is. Because we really don't want to call the truth true and what's false a lie. But if you're going to live out the principles of Jesus as found in scriptures, we need to have a foundation of truth. OK, so the truth needs to be found in the conversations we have in public, but also in our home. The conversations we have with other people, um, the conversations and the things that we believe, uh, not just with others, but also with ourselves. Many times we like seeing the truth and calling the truth out when it impacts everybody else. But the moment we have to do some self-reflection, we can sometimes get a little bit offended, a little bit touchy, or even a little bit delusional, right? We don't like digesting the reality of truth in our own lives. And there's a lot of things that we like to uh, lie to ourselves about. And that could be our age, our weight, our size, could be some of our dreams, some of the things that we say we accomplish, some of our goals, our children, right? There are several things that sometimes we have a hard time grappling with and um, uh, from a reality perspective. And the Bible encourages us to speak truthfully. And one of the best things that we can do, especially when it comes to our series, God at Home, is coming to grip with the truth within ourselves. Okay? But the first thing and um, that we have to have in this conversation is an understanding that truth is required. Not just for you, but also your audience. Because others are modeling behaviors based on the representation of how you present God at work, in your own life. If they see somebody who acts one way on Sunday and then does not proceed to carry themselves in a manner that is striving to live godly. Not saying that you're perfect, right? Saying that you don't, um, that you don't make mistakes, but it's more so if you're not striving to live godly, it's going to cause a hindrance in their relationship with God. See, the church is not responsible for as many people leaving the faith as the lack of genuine authenticity of what the next generation has seen their parents present. You hear what I'm saying? How are the generations ahead of us present Christianity deals a lot with the God we see at home being lived out. If you're going to be a balanced disciple, you've got to make sure that you exude the character of God in public. But more importantly, you display the character of God at home. So starting with the foundation of truth is an essential to your relationship and how authentic you are in relationship with God at home. So if you can tell the truth about yourselves, you are a perfect candidate for spiritual growth. Okay? And to go deeper with your relationship with God has a prerequisite of speaking the truth. The next area that you have to watch your conversation is, is that you're not always speaking through the lens or through the filter. I like that word. That's a good word. Through the filter of anger. Everything you're displaying has an angry undertone with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And sometimes uh, you might be feeling like um, your buttons are being pressed, right? You come in the house, you start yelling at the kids, you're yelling at the dog, you're yelling at the cat, you're yelling at your spouse, right? Everything in your conversation, even if you say, I'm not yelling, I'm not mad, it has this angry undertone. I went to the grocery store the other day, as many of you might know that our family got hit with the flu. So I went to go pick up a prescription for my wife. And while I was at the store, there was this little girl that was walking out front. And really, um, she was walking out the exit in front of me with her parents. And she was walking out the exit. And then her parents started going to the uh, entrance side. They were exiting out the entrance. And so she's like, hey, y'all are supposed to come to the exit to walk through the exit. But then all of a sudden, the mom just started yelling at the kid out of nowhere. And then she started saying, well, look at that man behind you. You're in this man's way. Well, the kid did nothing wrong. 
I was totally fine with walking at the kid's pace in front of me, right? And so even in something simple, the, the, the parent was like yelling and, and was angry. And we really got to be mindful about the way we conduct ourselves outside the church to resolve some of this angry undertone. Because God wants us to be people of peace. And in our speech, in our language, there should be a level of peace that resonates through our conversation. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Not to say that you don't get upset about things, not even to say that you don't get angry about things, but uh, through your relationship with God, uh, the goal is to produce emotionally balanced individuals, right? Emotionally based responses and emotionally balanced behaviors. So the, the Bible in Ephesians tells us, don't let the sun go down on our anger. And what that means is don't let that anger consistently continue where you go to sleep and you're angry and you wake up and you're angry and the anger then becomes a filter that now everything flows out of into the rest of your week, the rest of your life. And when you're angry, your mind begins to think on things uh, uh, from a state of anger. Right, that you should do certain things um, that are wrong, or uh, what does it mean to start giving place to the enemy? Right, you start thinking maybe things that you shouldn't think because you're coming from a position of anger rather than a godly manner. See, some of the things in our society when we have premeditated anger issues that we face in the justice system uh, from our everyday society, right, uh, seeking revenge. Plat planning or plotting uh, people's demise, a lot of it can be rooted in anger. So in addition to be a person that speaks the truth, you also want to be a person that seeks to be a person of peace. Not just where you're looking at opportunities to be mad and stay mad because abuse can um, give can be birthed in something like that. Addiction and alcoholism can be birthed in something like that. All of this because this anger is festering and you're looking for an outlet. But let me tell you, that's an unhealthy way of living and an unhealthy habit, which is why the Bible encourages us to not give a foothold to the enemy because we're so consumed with anger that we're not allowing the um, God to do an adequate work, having the adequate time and space and respect to transform our lives into people at peace. Let's also talk about another thing that Ephesians tells us right there. It tells us not to steal, but to have a job, work with our hands, and don't be lazy, okay? Find something useful to do with your hands to be able to contribute and help others so that way you can be a blessing. Right. So that others at home can see that you are trickling the character of God into your life, into your prayer life. God, would you show me how to use my hands to be a blessing? Do you see how these things can all uh, bring everything full circle to the God at home series? Right. You start thinking godly thoughts. You start speaking godly things. And then all of a sudden you're looking at the Bible differently. Your prayer life is developing. The way you meditate is different. How you worship is different. All because centered in your godly conversations and your godly actions. How can I be a blessing? So you can't sit around and be lazy. You should be looking for active ways to serve, help, and get others involved. Also, Parents, okay, just for a moment, time out. You got to teach your kids work ethic, yes, but you should also display work ethic in front of them, okay? Now, here's the last thing for our time together today do not let any profane or unwholesome talk proceed out of your mouth. And this kind of tendency to use church language uh, at church and then every other language everywhere else. Uh, it shouldn't be that way, okay? Right? Where you talk one way because you're at church and then talk a different way because you're at home. You need to work on building a model of consistency. So it shouldn't be a shocker when you communicate at church for the those that, that came with you to church on what you sound like. And this is one of the biggest misses of us as believers is we have to line our lives parallel to match what we believe, okay? 
I saw this uh, going around on social media with people when it came to uh, the topic of tipping your waiters or waitresses. I, I don't even know if this was a real thing or not, but I saw the picture. Um, and so uh, I know that we're inundated in tip nation, right? Give me a cookie. Uh, that'll be a 15% tip. It's like, no, right? I don't have to tip you about everything, but I do understand uh, in the, the culture, the restaurant culture, sitting down, the standard practice is to tip your waiters or your waitresses. So I saw this picture swirling around on social media and uh, it was a person that did not tip their waiter. They refused to tip the waiter. And on the receipt, on the bill, they wrote a note that said, if I only give Jesus 10%, then why would I give you 18? And in those instances, we really have to watch our conduct and the way we conduct ourselves and carry ourselves as a Christian, right? Because there's a few things that struck my mind and struck my attention uh, when I saw that statement on the receipt and this post on social that was shared. Now, again, I don't know if it was true or if somebody was just posting this just to be funny or whatever have you. But here's something that came to my mind, okay? I'm not, not tipping the, the waitress 18% because you pay your tithes, okay? I started thinking them, okay, your income is what you give your first fruits on, right? Which should be greater than your restaurant bill, right? If God gets uh, what's first, um, typically it should be 18 per more than 18% of an Applebee's bill. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then the second thing is uh, if you decide not to tip or do something that's kind of understood in that um, element or culture, don't bring Jesus into it, okay? Jesus might be looking down from heaven like, why'd you put my name in that receipt? Why, why'd you bring me into this, right? And so we really have to be mindful how we even share Jesus in our conduct and conversation because conversations and things like that can cause people to miss God because the way we conduct ourselves. And in this instance, even though uh, it's about letting wholesome talk come out of your mouth, but this one was written, but it's still a process of conduct, right? The principle here being uh, to be known as a person who builds up and edifies and lifts one another up, uh, right? Everything cannot be the sky is falling. And even if the sky is falling, adjust, reset, Trust God, all right? All right, so we really got to watch how we're conducting things, conducting ourselves uh, from a godly speech perspective. Additionally, here's a big one, okay? It's very important to speak the things that build each other up, watch this, as found in the Bible. Now, this is one of the reasons why reading the Bible is important to better understand the things that please God and the things that glorify God and edify other believers or those around us, okay? Because we should not be having conversations endorsing things that God is against. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our edification and encouragement should be wrapped around the truth of Scripture to build people up in the things of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Give me a yeah on that, right? I should not endorse something that God is against nor should I approve of things that are contrary to what he says in Scripture. This is why reading the Bible is important, right? And getting a part of a Bible-based church is important. Being around a community of believers is important. Bible-believing Christians. All of these things are important because through this process, you're now able to emulate and reproduce what God wants in a godly disciple or Christ follower, okay? Y'all hear what I'm saying? So that means that our language should not be one way at church and something completely different at home. Nor should our language at church seem foreign to the people that we came to church with, okay? Let that sink in. It should be more of a continuing of my relationship with God, now flowing or overflowing into a public space. So our conversations, to recap, should be based on truth, the reality, all right? Uh, we should be diligent not to get angry. And even if we have moments of anger, we need to deal with those things appropriately, okay? Next thing is we should seek ways to be a blessing. And even if that means working with our hands or having a strong work ethic on display, not being lazy, right? And then lastly, our conduct is important for us to speak those things that build each other up 
and are in alignment with God's word. So here's our assignment for this week. I want you to do a little bit of self-reflection and uh, I want you to think on or reflect on ways that maybe some of those words that we use, how we say some of the things that we say, our disposition when it comes to certain matters, or some of those things that we're endorsing or are quiet about that we should be speaking up on um, need to be closer aligned with what the Bible says. Okay, I want us to be thinking about that. And I want you to search these things out in your own heart, asking God to bring to light some of those things so that you can work on those this week. And I really believe that he's going to do some great things in your life. He's going to begin to review some of those conversations. Maybe you'll start having some thoughts that are on replay of some times that you were saying things or engaging things that maybe didn't glorify God. Maybe you have some jokes or some remarks or something that you made that may not have been appropriate. Maybe it's the approval of certain things in society that God just simply does not approve of. Whatever it is, anywhere, any way, however he brings that to your attention for you to reflect on, conduct your life and your speech, we want those things to be addressed and be aligned with what God says a disciple or a Christ follower should do. So I want you to pray and ask God to review these things to you. He's going to make it plain. He's going to show you some areas in your life where there's going to be some things that kind of uh, maybe you notice in the moment. And from there, the question is going to be posed in your heart, in your spirit. What are you going to do with it? How do you make the change? And what areas can you continue to have a conversation? And how can you be more diligent to maintain and grow godly character? And how to conduct, not just for yourself, the, the life of a believer, but all those you interact with, especially those who see you model it every day. So I want to pray for us. I want us to take some next steps and we're going to trust God to get through this process as we all have areas and some growing to do. But I believe through this, God is going to develop us. All right, let's pray. God, we love you so much. We worship your name. We glorify your name. We thank you for who you are and what you've done in our life. Lord God, as we're bringing this uh, series, God at Home, to a conclusion, Lord God, we ask you to search our hearts. We ask you to know us and bring things to the forefront of our minds, things that need to be worked on so that way we can display godly conversations better and godly conduct better. Help us to live out the things that we believe and help us to practice what we preach. The th same things that we point out in others help us to model, emulate, and live those things out as well. And so this week, Lord, as you reveal things to our hearts and as you point things out to bring to our attention, Lord, help us to begin to take steps toward developing and growing in those areas. Lord, we love you. We give your name the great praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, all right. Well, you may be here for the first time. You might be saying, hey, I want to take my next steps with Jesus. And let me tell you, I want to help you with that. You might be saying, hey, I want to have a relationship with Jesus. And I want to encourage you and tell you that's why we're here. We're here to help you take those next steps with Jesus. So if that's you, if you say, I want a deeper relationship with God, I want to go further, or I want to put my life on Jesus, I want to confess him as my Savior. If that's you, I, if you want to say yes to that, I want to tell you, you made a great decision. I want to help you take those next steps with Jesus, okay? So go ahead. I want you to send me an email. Our email address is connect at therisechurch.com. Now, you might already have accepted Jesus as your Savior. You might say, hey, you know what? I heard there was a church coming. I heard there's something happening on Van Bourne Road, and I need to be a part of a church family. I'm a believer, and I've been away from church for a while, or I'm looking for a new church to be a part of and get connected with. And if that's you, I want you to also go ahead and send me an email. This is a great, great church to be a part of. There's some fantastic people here that call Rise Church their home. It's absolutely awesome, and it's not even fully revealed what it's going to be like because I can tell you that we're in a season of acceleration and overflow. We're believing Ephesians 3.20, which is God's best over our people, over our group, over all the people that call Rise Church their home, but 
also this building. We believe that through this new campus, God is going to do an amazing work there, right? And so if you say, you know what? I got a gift. I know I can do something. I know I believe I have a purpose. Or you might say, hey, I don't even know where to get plugged in. Let me tell you, you have a contribution to make. You're gifted, you have purpose, and you are here for a reason. So I also want you to get connected with us. So do me a favor. Go ahead, send me an email, connect at therisechurch.com. I look forward to seeing you then. Well, it's our time for giving, and the ways that you can give are coming on your screen right now. And I want to go ahead and say thank you for being a first fruit giver, giving of your time, your talent, and your finances. Your finances really go to help us make a lasting impact for the kingdom of God here and around us. Now, on top of this, we have the Finish Line Fundraiser. And so maybe you're moved to give toward our Finish Line Fundraiser. And I want to tell you that we have an awesome, awesome, awesome goal that, uh, that's happening. But things are underway. You heard me talk about that earlier. We've only got 85000 left to go. So we're vision casting. We're doing everything we can. We're soliciting some help and partnership from key areas. Um, but I'm also going to ask you, each one of us, to see how we can make a personal gift. To make, to go ahead and see how we can be a blessing, how we can give so a financial seed toward the kingdom for this completion. We are extremely close. As you heard me mention earlier, we're only a couple weeks away, literally a couple weeks away from being able to be over there. But it's going to take us uh, doing all that we can do. It's going to take a little bit of dedication. It's going to take a little bit of effort and it's going to take God's favor. So I want to go ahead and say thank you in advance for your giving, for your contributions, and for your support. Thank you for honoring God. Thank you for uh, honoring God and trusting and believing Him in big ways. And I cannot wait to see all the amazing things that God is going to do here in Romulus at Rise Church. Well, let me say thank you so much for tuning in to this weekend's virtual experience. Well, listen, I am going to see you the same time, same place. There's no midweek this Wednesday. We are going to gather again back the following Sunday and be on the mind uh, on the lookout after next Sunday start preparing to meet on Sundays okay start preparing to meet Sundays at 10 a.m start readying yourself building that memory memory block it off on your calendar because we're gonna start gathering together again but I'm gonna pray for us that you have a great safe and prosperous week so father we thank you so much this week we bless your name we love you thank you for our time together Lord we pray that we can take in and digest fully this series He's got at home. And Lord, would you develop us and help us to be stronger, um, better, and, and really seek out and desire ways that we can walk with you more closely. Lord God, would you bless us and prosper us this week? Would you prosper us in our jobs, in our homes, in our community, in our finances, in our gifts, and our abilities? Lord, would you allow us to experience your goodness, your mercy, and your favor that chases us down, allow us to experience acceleration and overflow, and do things that only you can do. We trust you. We love you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have an amazing week. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye now.